Yeah, I mean, you, you, could, you could just go right through the Bible. Yes. Jonah tried to run the other way. Lord, put him in the fish. <laughs> but thank God for the grace of God. Yes. He lit him off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> One I, 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 I love so much is when Paul and Silas was in prison. The Bible says they beat him. And see, it wasn't the kind of beating we get. Don't do that no more. No, no, no. They whipped them. Their backs were bleeding. They took them down to the innermost part of the prison. Down there where the rats be running around. Put their feet in stocks. And put their hands in stocks. And it was dark and they were all alone. Yes. But the Bible says around midnight, around midnight, the people that was in the prison started hearing the song. Oh, yes. You know about Jesus. He's all right. You know about Jesus. He's all right. They started worshiping and praising God. The Bible said that praise was so great and so dynamic that the Lord said, Look, I got to deliver them. That's the worship team. Yes. Shook the place up. Open the prison door. Not only did they set them free, set everybody free. Yes. That's what the gospel is really all about. Yes. It's about putting God first. No matter what your situation is. No matter how where you find yourself at. Trusting that God is a God that cannot fail. God is a God that will bring you out. If he deliver one, he will deliver all. That's the gospel. There's one story I like probably more than all the stories. How the Lord delivered a man by the name of Pastor William Hudson from a $700 a day cocaine habit. Hello. Some of y'all ain't never been bound by a demon like that. That when you wake up, the devil will tell you you need to go smoke. Come on, go steal something. I don't want to. I didn't ask you what you want to do. Go steal something. Well, I'm tired. I don't care how tired you are. You need to stay up another day. This is the fourth day in a row. Who cares if it's the fourth day in a row? The devil is a taskmaster. He'll beat you and drive you into the ground. Folk can't help you. People get fed up with you. They throw up their hands because they realize they can't help you. Hello, somebody. Counseling can't help you. But Jesus, when the gospel is preached, the delivering power of the gospel. I know people try to say, well, I'm, I'm trying, Pastor. You ain't trying. Because if God can deliver me, oh, he can deliver like anybody. I know a lot of y'all's situation, and none of y'all's situation don't even compare. We, I, the Lord hasn't really brought somebody in at that depth yet. Thank God. Y'all be trying to, I, I pastor, you probably should go talk to him. Why don't you talk to him? Oh, you, you probably should talk to him. A level where the enemy has such a grip on your heart that you do things against people that you think and say that you love. Yes, yes. Where the enemy has such a grip on your heart that you can't even stop yourself from doing things that you know is the wrong thing to do. Where you spend every penny of your money and everybody else's money trying to satisfy something in your soul, trying to satisfy your flesh, and no one can bring you out or help you but Jesus. Yes. You know what I'm talking about. Stole your car. Hallelujah. Yes. One time he was so mad at me, he was going to hit me with a bat. But when he saw me, he just started praying for me. Amen. Power of God. Amen. My Lord. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Look at this. I don't hold you all day. Paul, in his understanding, says we thank God, the Father of which has made us Meet or qualify to be partakers of inheriting eternal life. Yes. Paul, who says, Listen, I really was the worst of all the apostles because I killed Christians, I was a murderer. Paul that understood that he really didn't have the right to go to heaven, but God took him and qualified him. Oh, no. He said, I thank God I was messed up. I was jacked up. My mind was screwed up. But the Lord took me and he qualified me. He made me meet to be part, a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light. Those that are walking with God. Yes. 
And he goes on to say, who have delivered us from the power of darkness. Listen, there are so many people that are bound by the power of darkness, they don't realize that it's a demonic stronghold. But we that are the saints of God, we understand that there are two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness and there's the kingdom of God. There are so many people that are plugged in to the kingdom of darkness. There are so many people whose lives are being ravaged in the kingdom of darkness. But God said uh, through his power, he's going to unplug them. He's going to bring them out. He's going to bring them into the kingdom of his dear son. So many people who are overcome with pain and anguish and hate and sorrow and sickness all because of sin. Some of your family members, the only problem is sin. Yes. They try to tell you I need a better job. No, that's not the problem. Your problem is sin. Uh -huh. if, I, if I only had a new house, no, your, only, your problem is sin. Yes. If I just had some better friends, no, your, only, your problem is sin. Yes. Yes. But the power of God yes. can deliver. Yes, sir. He gives us power over all unseen forces. Uh -huh. Forces of darkness that are pressing against us. You ever wake up just mad sometime? Nobody say nothing to you. Nobody's done anything to you. You know, matter of fact, you went to bed, you felt good. But then you wake up, you just got this attitude. And you, you try to attribute to it, well, it's because I haven't had my coffee yet. And then you drink one cup, two cups, that don't do nothing, you still got attitude. And then you're driving and you're mad at everybody because they're driving too slow, but they're doing 90. <laughs> and, and you can't figure out what's going on with me. What's really going on with you is that it's a spiritual attack that's coming against you. It's an unseen force. Yes. Yes. Sometimes enemy come at you and make you not even want to go to church. Yes. I ain't going to church no more. It's like, why? I just don't want to. Okay. You don't see that? That, that is an attack of the enemy? You really think it's you that don't want to go to church? It is the devil that's coming against you to destroy you. But I thank God for the power of the gospel. He gives us the Holy Ghost. He gives us the power over unseen forces. The Bible says that be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. Why does he say all that? He said because we're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against unseen forces. How many people have been in a fight? Some of y'all be fighting all the time, but hello. Sometimes when you get in a fight, right away you get hit. So I ain't never got hit. Okay, you ain't been in a real fight. I don't care how big and bad you are. If you've been in a fight, you're going to get hit. I didn't say you lost. I said you got hit. Sometimes when you're in a fight, you get hit. You might get hit in your ribs. You might get hit in your jaw. You might get kicked in your leg. But that doesn't end the fight. Sometimes as you get going along really good in a fight, depends on who you are, you get scratched in your face, get your hair pulled, get your shirt torn. Get dirty rolling around on the ground. Oh, I'm talking about real fights. See y'all? Right. You know. Sorry, just flashback. Just help me. Amen. <laughs> this is how it is when you fight the devil. It's not always going to be some quick knockdown, drag out. He going to hit you, you going to hit him back. He's going to knock you down, you're going to get back up and knock him down. He's going to drag you through the mud, you might get a little dirty, but listen, the fight is not over yet. The battle belongs to the Lord. We are in a battle. We are fighting unseen forces. But listen, with the Lord on our side, who can be against us? I don't care what the devil does against you. You have the ability to be victorious. Why? Because you have the gospel on your side. What's the gospel? The gospel is the fact that God loves you. Yes. And he's for you and not against you. Yes. You heard people preach, oh God's going to get you. God's not trying to get us. Why is God going to get me? If he wanted to get me, he would have got me already. Like God's trying to get me. God's trying to, I'm trying to duck. What? Right. Yes. Right. You 
are faced with some serious challenges. We are faced with the challenge of articulating the word of God to a world that's gone mad. We are faced with telling somebody that's pretty much a lost their mind that listen, God can change you. We are faced with talking with people that are, are cussing and fussing every day. Listen, the Lord loves you. We are faced with people that are so bound by alcoholism and by nicotine that let them know, listen, God knows how to deliver. God will bring you out of that. To articulate that in a very clear and understandable way by telling them straight like it is, listen, God can deliver you. Not some deep revelation. Not some hermeneutics. They don't have to break down the Greek and the Hebrew. The Bible is very clear. God comes to deliver those that are born in sin and bring us out of sin and translate us into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes. To articulate a word to a world that doesn't believe in God anymore. That heaven and hell is in your mind. There's three heavens. Heaven's right here on earth. You don't have to be baptized. You don't have to have the Holy Ghost. Don't you know you ain't got to go to church to be saved? A world that believes everything contrary to the Word of God. I don't have to listen to that man. He's a man just like me. No, he's the pastor. Come on, Come on. I can learn the Word for myself. That's not what the Bible says. He gives us pastors of his own heart that will teach us knowledge and give us understanding. Right, right, right. We are challenged to carry the gospel yes. of Jesus Christ. Yes. I wonder if you're up to the challenge. I wonder, have you come to a place that you say, yes, Lord, I accept uh, the great commission of Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, for me to go into all the world, declaring the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And all, of course, we know those are names, those are titles. There's only one name. His name is Jesus. I wonder if you're really up to the challenge of telling your neighbor, listen, God is able to do great things in your life if you just surrender your life over to Jesus. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's a challenge because sometimes uh, the devil will put fear and tell you just to shut up. Don't say nothing. They ain't going to listen anyway. Right. The Lord doesn't say to tell people because you know they're going to listen. <laughs> One of the greatest testimonies that I have when I was witnessing, I was on the college campus. 